Well, hello, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and we are coming to you live from Royston, Georgia, the home of Ty Cobb. For many, many years, the undisputed greatest hitter of all time, the man who was known for coming in spikes high. Some called him a dirty player. Some called him a killer. But in the end, he was a philanthropist, and he was a man who invested wisely into Coca-Cola, ended up with a whole lot of money, and has a museum right here in Royston. So today, we're gonna check out the Ty Cobb Museum. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And he's also buried here, so we're gonna go to his grave and pay our respects as well. And there he is, remembered on the town water tower. And there you can see he has his own Memorial Parkway, Ty Cobb Memorial Parkway. Now there's the other Welcome to Royston Ty Cobb sign. They have two of them, they used to have four, but what's interesting is at that one right there when they put the original one up, and we'll probably see it in the museum, they have a picture of Ty Cobb standing right underneath it. And what's interesting about that is that this was not the town he was born in, but this is where they moved and he was raised, learned how to play baseball. And eventually when he became a very, very wealthy man, after investing in General Motors and Coca-Cola, he donated a big gob of money to this town and everything's named after him in his parents' honor. So the hospital, uh, the civic center, all the auditorium, everything is all named after Ty Cobb. All oh, right there you can see they're having live pro wrestling every Friday night. And this, a lot of these buildings were here when Ty Cobb lived here, including the one to the left that we're gonna stop and look at. You can see it says, Joe T. Cunningham, that was a friend of Ty's. And that's also the man that made his baseball bats. Now Ty Cobb was not your average baseball player, my friends. This is the guy who is ranked number three on the all-time players list. This is a guy who, in 1936, when the Hall of Fame inducted its very first class, this is a man who received 222 out of 226 votes, the most anyone would ever get, all the way up until 1982. This is a man who stole home 54 times. He stole second, third, and home in succession five times. 11-time batting champion, 367 batting average lifetime. Quite an accomplishment, and it literally started in the parking lot that we're standing in now. So right here, between the funeral home and the church, there's a parking lot, and there used to stand Ty Cobb's childhood home. Now, Ty Cobb's father was not the supportive father um, of his baseball playing, as you might think. This is not one of those stories where I'm gonna say he and his dad used to pass the ball here. No, no, his dad was a state senator and didn't want Ty to play baseball at all, but Ty loved it so much that he couldn't help himself and he became a really good ball player um, and eventually would dedicate his whole career to his father's memory. Now, the reason that I start here is not just because this is where he was raised and where he developed that love of baseball, but this is where his first tragedy in life happened. This is where his dad was killed by his mother. You see, Ty's father believed that his wife was cheating on him and so he went out one night and um, came back to spy on her, to sneak up to catch her in the act. And when he did, when he prowled outside those windows, she thought he was an intruder and she shot him, killed him, and was tried for murder. Now, this was extremely sad and uh, they said that Ty used this as his motivation to be a great ball player. They said he went full blast after this and dedicated his entire career to his father, like I mentioned before, um, and what a career it was. He became the most vicious player. He would come in, sliding in, spikes high to injure players, go ask home run Baker. But it all started right here with that moment. And when he would eventually make a ton of money by investing in Coca-Cola and General Motors, he would donate a bunch of it back to the city in his parents' name. I mentioned earlier that some called him a killer. That's because a lot of the first biographies that came out about him said that he told stories of beating up uh, drifters and, and really being a violent man. And then later on, it would come out that a lot of those stories were fabricated. So a lot of the truth behind some of this is somewhat mucky. Ty Cobb played 22 seasons the last six being a player manager. Now let's go take a look in here. This was the local furniture store 
And this, as I mentioned, was a great friend of Ty Cobb's and this was the man that would make his bats. Now, as I understand it, his granddaughter still owns the business and keeps somewhat of a little remembrance of Royston and Ty Cobb in here. Except, unfortunately, it appears to be closed. Now one thing I really think is worth mentioning is that in his playing time he was known for being quite a very racist man. However, in his later years after he retired when he saw the um, effects of African Americans playing baseball and he saw how good of a player they were um, and saw that they were equal, he changed his tune and was pretty vocal about it. About um, it being a good thing that African Americans were able to play in Major League Baseball. So he did see the error of his ways. Now I'm not gonna show you every single thing in town that has Ty Cobb's name attached to it, but I'll show you quite a few because I think it's important to see what an effect he's had on this community and kind of an interesting thing to know someone who was born and raised here and started their professional career here. There actually used to be pro teams in Royston. He played for the Royston Reds <laughs> and the Royston Bombers. Nobody seems to really know where those fields are though. Now we're currently standing in front of the Royston Public Library. Look at that. Look at this amazing statue of Ty sliding in. Think of that. Right here in this town. Number three greatest all time. And that might even be debatable. That's pretty amazing to see the legacy that he created for himself. And then they have this great big monument right up here with his nickname, the Georgia Peach. And if you're interested in any kind of merchandise in town, there's actually an antique store that sells things of Ty, but they're not open yet. I absolutely love getting to do these historical baseball type vlogs. I, I got to go to Cy Young's hometown and see his house and his museum and all his memorabilia. Next stop, we gotta do Babe Ruth. Now I saw a photo of something online I was looking for and I couldn't find it, so I popped in City Hall and found this. Check that out. Look at those accomplishments. Most runs scored, most hits, most home runs, most runs batted in, most stolen bases, most times at bat. Wow. All right, now that you've gotten to see a little bit of Ty Cobb's legacy here in Royston, let's go to the museum. Well, it's located inside the Joey Adams Professional Building. You'll see it says right there, the Ty Cobb Museum. And as you swing around, you got a picture of him right there on that sign. And I believe, I read once again, that this one's free. So we'll see if it's the same free as the Margaret Mitchell house. $13 free. Anybody ready to see some of those famous Ty Cobb cleats? Some of those spikes that would have jabbed all those guys as he slid into second, third, and home? They got him inside. All right, we are inside. Take a look at this. Minor league ballpark there. Now I did ask if any of the homes that he lived in out here are still in existence and they said unfortunately, no, not really. They said unfortunately, um, the two that he mainly lived in uh, burned down and he did rent one house out near Cornelia because they said he was going to uh, build a big property but then he found out he had cancer and just decided to rent out there. So this is the beginning of his story and his father was an educator who wanted him to uh, be a doctor or a lawyer. And as we know, that is not what happened. That is Ty right there. But they did say that his son and grandson, they've all followed in those footsteps of those careers, but not the great one. He had to be one of the greatest baseball players of all time instead. Now this is a letter that Ty used to carry around in his wallet. This was from his father. You can see Tyrus Dearboy. Yeah, sad story. And that was his birth home. 
And there is a Shoeless Joe Jackson museum not too far from here in Greenville. Uh, but we're not going to hit it on this trip. I want to save it for another trip. And this museum, they're actually building a larger one. So probably by the time we come back, there'll be a lot more to see. Look at all the old baseball cards here. You know, many of them reproductions that came out after he had passed. Kind of a Legends type cards, but still interesting to see. Now that would definitely be an original. And then look at this one. Sorry, there's no option but to have my shadow. I've tried every positioning. There's just no way to not have my shadow in this. Check out that, that's a hand numbered Royston card. Look at that, that's a 1916 card. And a Ty Cobb gold watch. Check out the Ty Cobb pocket knife. Now he played a majority of his career for the Tigers and then finished it up with the Philadelphia Athletics as a player manager, but this is all his Detroit memorabilia. One of his actual jerseys. Then we have signed baseball in there. along with his pocket watch hanging there. On the jersey you can see there's a little bit of a stain of some sort, possibly a chewing tobacco spit. Is that what it is, Ty? Now that green seat is from the original uh, Tiger Stadium 1912 to 1999. Briggs Stadium, called both Briggs and Tiger Stadium. And then they have one of his gloves and another signed ball from 1960, which would have been right before his passing, not too long. I mean, he passed away in 61, so. And he took him to three pennants right there in a row. 1907, 1908, and 1909. Those are some of his famous cleats, or spikes as they're known. And then above them are some of his stirrups, the leggings. And that is a monstrous cigar that was sent to him. That thing is easily, I'd say 14 inches or maybe even 16 inches long. Compliments to the champion bat of the world for 1910, Ty Cobb. And that's his award in recognition of getting 4,191 hits in Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And that award right there is the 100th anniversary award for being one of baseball's greatest players ever. Take a look at that statue. There's a picture of Ty in that dark suit. And this was actually donated by the family. That's one of the VIP seats from Tiger Stadium circa 1912. Now that watch right there says this was Ty Cobb's watch from the 1939 Centennial Celebration Hall of Fame ceremony. And all of these were donated by Peggy Cobb. These are all, you can see there's a Ty Cobb belt buckle right there and a 1914 team pin. And then his Hall of Fame Philadelphia A's pin. It's a 1907 button. And he was even on playing cards when you played poker. Ticket from one of the games he would have played against Cleveland. That's kind of neat, look at that. And there's a letter that Ty Cobb wrote to his granddaughter. It's on his letterhead. You can see at the very, very top it says, Tyrus R. Cobb, Glenbrook, Douglas County, Nevada. Dear little Minnie Cobb, your granddaddy. And that's an award that the Detroit Tigers gave him in 1921 for being the world's greatest baseball player. 
There's Ty with his dog. And that was his hunting dog because those are hunting trophies. And this one is 1918 Georgia Field Trial won by Ty Cobbs Hall. So that was Hall right there. The puppy. And that is Ty Cobb's diabetic card. Now take a look at all the stuff in here. You're gonna see some pretty cool stuff. Let me show you. You've got that bust of him, the bronze bust. And then his golf clubs <laughs> with the cover that says his name. And there he is playing. And then these are all items that fans have left at Ty's grave just showing his impact on the 21st century and that he is still remembered. And that is Ty Cobb's toiletry box. And it says that it's monogrammed on top. It's very light, you can still see TRC. There's Ty on the ball. And then down here you'll see a ball made out to Royston by Pete Rose, the man who broke Ty's record. Here's an awards section, various awards that he got and received. You can see there's a silver slugger, that silver bat, and then he's got a top players of the century award right in there. Let's see if we can show you that a little bit better. Ty Cobb Comics, Baseball Legends. And of course, not only a play about him, Cobb, but also a movie starring Tommy Lee Jones. Look at the Royston police officer badges. Now, being that Coca-Cola was based out of here, he was smart enough to invest his money, his uh, fortune from playing all those years of baseball. Um, I'm kidding, there was not really a fortune to be had in baseball back then. You, you really got paid per season, and when you weren't playing, like in the off season, you didn't make any money. But it says that he, have a, he had a great fortune, not through baseball, um, although he was the first million dollar player, he did so through wise investments in stocks, primarily the Coca-Cola and General Motors companies. Displayed here are various items dating back to when Ty Cobb would have been a, uh, an investor, and these were the advertisings they used. You can even see they used him as a selling point there. Those are golden Coca-Cola bottles with Ty Cobb's image on them. And then take, take a look at that, his business card. Now this is mentioning that not only was Ty Cobb an avid hunter, but that was part of his training as far as his regiment to get ready for baseball every season. Um, they said that he would wear weighted boots when he would go out hunting to strengthen his legs, obviously for all that stealing he was gonna be doing. And look, you can see some of his old shells in there. And that gun, that shotgun that he's got in the case right here, is the same one that he's wearing in that Christmas card that he sent out, or <laughs> wearing. It's the same one that he was using and holding in the Christmas card. If he was wearing a shotgun, I'd have questions. And this case is dedicated to the effect that he had on joining the Tigers. He set numerous records, including um, 2,245 runs and 892 stolen bases. Isn't that amazing? And there's a little bit of dirt from Tiger Stadium in that ball holder. Now this is his philanthropy uh, section of the exhibit. And what they're talking about here is how he donated a ton of money to the hospitals here. There were two separate hospitals and he donated money for them to make it one. And that's why his museum here is inside of a medical building. <laughs> and it says that this wall right here is used from the bricks and bronze plaque from the original Cobb Memorial Hospital dedication ceremony. And he did that because like I said, his, his dad really wanted him to be a, a doctor or a lawyer. So he had that great career and then put his money back into the community here in his parents' name. These are some of the instruments that the hospital would have used when it opened in 1950. 
And there's a picture of Ty Cobb holding that golden cleat right there, that bronze cleat. At home in Palo Alto, so he had a home where the Grateful Dead started. And he was holding that because that was a bronzed cleat of his. That's not just an award, that was actually one of his playing cleats. And then that is a golden lifetime pass to Major League Baseball. So he could take that, show that anywhere, any stadium, and go in and watch a game free of charge. Now this is cool. This is a trophy donated, it says on there, by Betty Davis. And this was a 1941 trophy that he won in a golf tournament with Babe Ruth. Isn't that neat? And this is Ty Cobb's trophy for having the most stolen bases in a single season of 1915. In this part of the exhibit, they're mentioning that his legacy lives on through his generosity. There is a scholarship funded in his name that helps students be able to uh, go study whatever form they choose. One thing I noticed online, a lot of the reviews of this museum, people said either A, they didn't really want to come, but a family member wanted to come, and then once they were here, they said they were really glad they came, or it was people saying that uh, they walked out of here with a whole new appreciation for Ty Cobb as a person, and I think I can agree with that as well. Man, for a one-room museum, this place was awesome. I can't recommend it enough. And no, it wasn't free, much like everybody keeps reporting online, oh, it's free. No, it was only five bucks though, totally worth five bucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and purchase a baseball in here and we're gonna fill it out and leave it at his grave. So I went ahead and got one and uh, she said that the uh, color green was his signature color. He really liked to sign in green for some odd reason, so I'm gonna borrow a Sharpie. We're gonna write a little message on there and leave this at his grave. So this is kind of crazy. Um, as I was purchasing this ball to sign, um, the lady that was helping me said, so do you have a particular baseball team you follow? And I said, yeah, I, I'm a Cincinnati Reds fan. She said, oh, well, we actually have a, uh, one of the guys that was on the 1990 Cincinnati Reds was from this area and his, uh, family still lives here and everything. I go, who? And she said, the catcher, Joe Oliver. And I go, whoa. So I filled out the baseball. Thank you for your contributions to baseball and to Royston. And I signed it and we're gonna go out to Ty's grave now. And they said, it'll be really easy to find. It's the only mausoleum out there. It's only about a mile and a half down the road from here. Oh, I pretty much see it as soon as you drive in. It's, as they said, the only mausoleum here. Wow, that's magnificent. Fitting for a baseball and philanthropic legend. Look at that. I don't see anything else left up here, so they must clean it off pretty regularly, but Let's go ahead and leave this for you, Ty. Well, let's go ahead and peek on in, what do you say? Oh, there he is. Well, my friends, I think that's gonna do it for today. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I hope it gave you a whole new perspective on Ty Cobb. Now, we are gonna head back to Atlanta because my mom has to catch a flight in two hours, so we will see you all tomorrow from somewhere else, not in this Royston, Georgia. Somewhere else. Have a great night. Good night.